All right, well, we joined with Kevin Krieger. Not a bad view. I mean, depending on how you look at life. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, definitely, man. John Nutt, what's the word, my brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, man. It is uh, part two. Part the Preakness. Two. Round two. Ding, ding, ding. Let's get it started. I know. How you feel about the performance in the derby? We know the weather wasn't right, but what's your take on it? What was your feelings on You know, quite frankly, I actually read the program and see it's a 17, length, 17 by 49 and something lengths. I mean, that, that tells you the horse didn't run his race, you know, so we just kind of went back to the drawing board and I was glad to be a variable on the drawing board as far as having to come into exercising into the preakness and just me being on his back in the morning, I mean, everybody from the media, the fans, other trainers in the race, the clackers on the track, the trainers, the owners, the groom. Everybody that's visually seeing what this horse is doing in the morning right now, sees him winning the preakness. So, and I tell him, you know, this horse right now, how good he's doing, no telling what kind of race he's going to come out and run tomorrow because he's training unbelievable right now. Okay, so it seems like you're still confident. Yeah, man, I lose my confidence in him at all. This horse, he doing really good. And, you know, i just glad to have been here to do my part as far as getting him to going better if if that's what he needed as far as me getting on him you know okay now one of the things that i spoke to gary stevens about you you say you're a heady rider but you also got a lot of confidence now at what time you decide you know what i'm gonna just pull up this horse i mean you knowing how trainers and owners could be sometimes well you know at the at the 3h pole the the kick he normally gives me when we reach to that point I ain't had it. We got to the 516 pool and we were in deeper mud. I wouldn't say water because we were in deeper mud. So I just say, you know what? Instead of me getting aggressive and riding him hard, mm -hmm. let me just take care of this horse and bring him home. And if you notice how many horses are the Kentucky Derby actually made it to the Preakness, he went from 19 to 9, take away 10 of them out of the field. So, a lot of them really didn't make it back up in race good, and that's because they were struggling in an unsafe track at the same time. Alright, now what you learned from that race about Golden Sense, and even yourself, that, that team? Um, that last race, there really wasn't nothing to learn, you know. That last race, just we just, the entire team draw a line through it. We ain't even studying that race anymore, that's behind our bus. You know, I think basically though the team realized that I've been asking them to gallop him for a while now and then it, it came to light that I should be on his back in the morning and I'm here galloping him now and that's what I really wanted to do from the beginning. So we're just looking forward and seeing better future for this house right now. Now right, no, speaking of futures, you got a bright future yourself. Um, kind of make an unprecedented move as a race rider, a great race rider at that to um, come and spend two weeks losing some mounts back in California um, in pursuit of this, this goal, this dream. Tell us about that decision, how hard it was to make that decision and do you think it will have an effect on your business outside of the Doug O'Neill camp? Well, this is how I look at it. The morning when I was packing my bags to go back to California, my agent called me and told me, you know, Doug O'Neill wants me to go to Baltimore to gallop him. Well, I tell him, just call Doug O'Neill and tell him my packet to go to Baltimore, then if that's the case, because it's something that I wanted to do. And if this house needs me on his back to win the Preakness, shoot, I don't see me as to why I would have gone to California. And as far as the business over there, you know, if it turns out that we win the Preakness, it ain't gonna hurt my business. I think it gonna just make me look better as a person and as a jockey, you know, because now people will see, well, yeah, you know, that, that youth faithful, that youth stick with Doug O'Neill and, um, and the owners, and Doug O'Neill and the owners stuck with him, so it's only out of respect I have to give them back the same opportunity they given to me by sticking with me. Right. And um, if, if we end up winning this race, most definitely we're going to the Belmont and if we end up winning in Belmont that should only make my business blossom you know and if he goes to the Belmont I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna just change my talk to New York for a month and that's how it's going to go. 
All right, so a good business move then. Yeah, right. yeah. It's, you know, everything is a gamble. We gamble every time we go out there. But so my gamble right now is Golden Sense. And if Golden Sense do good, I do good. Okay. All right, now speaking of doing good, you'll like your chances tomorrow. Yeah, I love it. Love right. it. And we love the two hole too. Okay. For the reason that the hash run out of the two hole twice. Yep. And win twice. Yep. So can't complain with the two hole. Not at all. All right, so smaller field. Um, but a lot of people lose sight of the fact that Golden Sense is a young horse. How many races that Golden Sense have participated in? The Derby made seven, this one will make eight. And that was the first one in the slap we kicked back and... Yeah. Uh, now, did you feel the horse underneath you shying away from the mud or...? No, he ran into the mud good, you know, when we turned on the back straight. And to be honest, he didn't get much mud in his face. Okay. I only had to switch one gobbles and I was a jockey and when we came back and I look at his face just to see how much more he actually got in his face. The groom did like this with the sponge once and that was all the more to come out of his face. He didn't have to go back up twice or three times to clean his face. But so he just didn't like the surface you No, feet. he just, you know, I, the house under me felt great. Like everything, like I was going to win the race down the back stretch. But like I said, we switched to the trades pole and he didn't switch and kick with his pace. He switched and just started regressing. So I said, you know what? For whatever reason he was doing that, I, I wasn't going to force him, you know? Okay. So you could have feel Palace Ballas were going way too fast? Or? Yeah, naturally you could feel out. I know my has fast. Anything in front of this has going too fast. Yeah. And he never had a house run in front of him and beat him, so it's obvious. Okay. So this feel, you, you fear of anybody going to the front? And um, setting too hot a pace for you? No, because anybody go in front of me, you know, this has sit second and number numerous amount of times now. And this wouldn't be the first time he'd be put in a situation. No, right, no, a lot of people going in said so this would have been your best chance to win. This is short this distance. Um also you were favored by some to win the derby. Considering the performance in the derby and considering that this is the shortest, how good do you feel? The distance never puzzled me, not the derby distance, because if, if you could watch the derby distance and think that the derby distance stopped Golden Sense, Golden Sense was done so far back in the race that then you would say he can't go a mile, yes. you know? So I, 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 the distance never puzzled me, and I look at it like this, the, the Preakness is only a sixteenth of a mile shorter than the derby. And it's a sixteenth of a mile longer than the Santanita Derby, so the distance he make me feel no more confident at all. Okay. All right. Now in Kentucky, African Americans were flocking to you. Um, how it feels to not only carry the Virgin Islands banner, but African Americans on a whole? It feels good. You know, it feels good, and and. The, 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 the main part about it is to, to reach these goals and to reach these achievements and have the world recognizing me as who I am, you know? African-American, a hard worker, and I made it to these to these races, you know? So it, it's, a, it's a good feeling. Now, now a lot of Orchard Islanders come into the track tomorrow, a larger population in this part of the, the region. Um, and a lot of folks expecting to come tomorrow. How does it feel to get a Virgin Island support? People catching planes, in this instance, people driving from all over the place to, to witness your history. I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna say, <laughs> I ain't gonna say I'm happy about a lot of the people that are coming because some of them should have stayed home, but the majority of them <laughs> I have people, but some of them should have stayed home okay. because the words I hear a lot of them speak about me isn't you know it's like nice nasty and right. I don't I ain't got nobody that I just speak good about that because of the success I'm gonna be there. You know, and then again as a man, you know, you you want to look around the negativity in the sport and in the business and in life period and say to yourself, you know, well maybe these people finally come to the senses. Right. And hopefully they could realize well all the bad judgments and the bad comments they made about me. I'm actually a nice person, you know. Right. Okay, well we don't ask for the details. We don't ask who should not have come. <laughs> All right, now, okay, a little while ago, you got a phone call from reggae superstar Chino. Um, I don't know if you're going to be riding next year because you got a jersey. 
from Rick Pitino. Where, where the jersey got? I think I should pull it out. Yeah, man, pull out the jersey. So you gotta let them know that Patino offer you the run point guard next year for the NCAA champions. <laughs> yes, sir. So you ready to run point? Yeah, man. Okay. Now you were supposed to frame that. You tell him you gonna frame it, and then and then what happened? Well, he tell me no, so we play point guard next year. So I tell him, well, just get my spot reserved. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Hey, well, definitely, man. Again, congratulations to you. I'm happy to be here and witness it from our first interview, however many years ago, when you win five in a day, to, to now. Uh, very proud of you, the Virgin Islands, proud of you. Well, most of them. Yeah. <laughs> I got it to you. Most of them. That's right. You have to keep your real ration. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, well, definitely, man. Thanks, big brother. VI to the bone, right? Yes, sir. OGR for life. I think I'm ready.